Boomy, you gotta stop doom scrolling on TikTok because your attention span is dropping faster than my retention rate. Wrong! In case you forgot what happened in the last episode, let me remind you. Some freedom fighters or whatever tried to pull a JFK on you. Abed pulled right in front of your door with a f <clears throat> bomb in a suitcase with the involvement of these two. And you're just letting them run free? Instead, you're keeping two Asian dudes in a maximum security for what? Destroying a vegan shop? Which, if you ask me, is a service to the community. Conclusion, Asians are black people of Omashu. sees things through only one lens. Victory or defeat, nothing else matters. Not even the loved ones lost along the way. Five minutes of jail time got into Iroh. He's been reading too much on 14 and this is deep and I don't like it. I prefer the goofy Uncle Iroh. So I'll just pretend they're talking about hip hop. Where are you taking him? Probably to the field to pick cotton. You. What did he say? Hey. Oh. You're not as lucky. You're going to see the king. Buddy, I think you have it backward. Actually, now it makes sense why we prioritize anti-vegan activists over an attempted assassination on the king. They've got everything backwards. He is the Avatar. Yeah, I don't think you should be aware of that fact. But then again, everybody already knows that he's the Avatar. So why am I even asking? I guess. Okay. Then Boomy starts pressing Yang. You like to goof off and watch LeBron James highlights on YouTube. <laughs> Bro, I don't even know who LeBron James is. Don't you f***ing lie to me. I know you like basketball. Which is surprising because he seems to have forgotten about his ops trying to flatline him like five minutes ago, but somehow remembers oddly specific stuff about Aang. I am nothing like the firebenders. My man's crying. This dude went from having a sexy ass haircut to meeting a girl, falling for her, getting his heart broken, his entire plan sabotaged, and a yee yee ass haircut in just the span of one day. My man's top track gonna be lucid dreams, I can already tell. Frozen in an iceberg for a hundred years, huh? That must have been nice. No, it was a nightmare. The world is on fire. People are dying. Okay. Booby continues pressing Yang for a little bit, but then he drops a bar so cold that when Nas heard it, he removed Hip Hop is Dead from Spotify. Let us leave. <laughs> Sokka and Katara are trying to get to the dungeons via the secret tunnels and they run into Wu-Tang Clan. Personally, I prefer some DMX, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't vibing with this. Now, if my memory does not betray me, this is the arc where Katara and I kiss to open the door, right? So, like, um, are we gonna see some sweet home Alabama sh** here? Although I doubt we'd get some of the juicy Game of Thrones type of sh**. I'm suspiciously excited about this one. They're doomed. Come on, don't hesitate to speak up. It's a long ride to the... Phil now, unless those are Sea Prism handcuffs, I don't see a reason for Iroh not to firebend his way out of this one. But Fifi, he needs to do the hand signs to firebend. Shut the f up. I seen that once in a Zuko fire breathe, okay? See those green shiny stuff on the ground? Those are the brain cells I lost watching boomy scenes. Well, never mind, because those are crystal math. I just wanted a bite. I personally, I'm more of a fennel guy, but I guess to each their own. I never talked to him. You don't get to tell me who I can talk to. And you don't get to just ignore me. I can if you're being an idiot. Dad put me in charge. You're not dad. Yeah, I'm with you on this one, Sokka. I, I would have fell for Abed too. But then again, thinking about it, I kind of fell for Jet too. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a clear example of sexism you are witnessing. <laughs> no, Bossing say the city at the ration. <laughs> The siege. So can Katara do amendments, so Jamie and Cersei is still on the table, but unlucky them because right after that they run into a uh, Baljamore, is that what it's called? Yeah, Baljamore. Zuko pulls up protesting the freedom of his uncle and his protest is successful. They free him and looks like those are not sea prism stones. Boomy challenges Aang to a 1v1 and Aang is like, brother, please, you're high on math. I can't fight you. And Boomy says, that's what makes it fun, baby. You're still a goddamn child. We cut back to Katara and Sokka, and it looks like they're about to get eaten by this Baljamore. But then, to my surprise, this happened. Love is brightest in the dark. It's blind. They don't navigate by sight, but by feeling. I don't think he senses love, Katara. I don't see a single display of love. That hand-holding, that's a sign of fear given the context of the scene. And now I'm too lonely to confirm that from a personal experience, but I've seen it in a bunch of movies, so it must be true. I think it's more likely that he's mistaking the scent of massive coming from your pants with the scent of love. 
But hey, if it works, it works. It's getting hectic. It's about to go down. Boomy is going absolute mental. He wants to die. He's like, the arrow didn't get me in the last episode, but I want this rock to smash me into pieces. And Aang is like, it's gonna be all right. Stay off them drugs. You've been taking too much meth. Boomy doesn't listen. He's dead serious about dying. And Aang is like, bro, just move aside, please. I'm about to get hernia. But just like in the last episode, before things get nasty, Sokka and Katara pull up big time and save the day with their stinky ass pants, of course. And with that, the fourth episode comes to a conclusion. It was a really hard watch. It took me two and a half hours to finish the episode and I am fatigued. I'll probably make myself some fennel and some funny Kanye compilations. Thanks for watching and subscribe.